Hey you guys, what's going on? It's Queerphrexia and we are back with another video. Today, we are going to be diving into the world of Standard. I know I, we've typically only talked about Commander and Dual Commander on this channel, but Standard RCQ season is coming up. And so I wanted to start talking about Standard before gameplay started going live on this channel. That's right, Standard gameplay is coming. Let's give it some time. Um, I think it'll be starting around the new year. So I'm very excited to dive into the 60 card format and my first competitive like experience with magic i'm going to be playing in in standard rcqs and hopefully qualifying we'll see how it goes but um yeah if you uh, are excited for standard car content please hit the like button subscribe and hit the bell and with that being said let's get into my top five decks in the standard meta right now that you should expect to see in your standard rcq coming 2024. So, starting out, let's talk about Esper Midrange. That's right, Esper is strong in Standard. Who would have ever thought? I mean, Esper, strong colors. It's just mind-blowing, you know? Uh, this deck is playing Rafine, Scheming Scoundrel, or Scheming Seer. Sorry, I cannot I cannot speak uh, for Esper. 1-4 uh, with Flying and Ward 1. Whenever you attack, target attacking creature connives X, where X is the number of creatures attacking. Uh, that It's a crazy card. It is the center of this deck, and it is absolutely bonkers. They're also playing Shield of the Apocalypse, which is obviously, when you draw a card, you gain 2, and your opponent draws a card they lose to on a 4-5 death touching body for 4 mana which is an insane card and it's gonna be that card's gonna be talked about a lot in this video so I just wanted to go ahead and get that out there um this deck is it's a mid-range deck so we're playing the wandering emperor which um the wandering emperor has flash uh and when it comes in you can activate its abilities it's the speed so you can either tick up one to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and it gains first strike until end of turn you can neg one to create a 2-2 two -two samurai creature token with vigilance or you can neg two and exile tapped creature and gain two life um they're also you know the wandering Gipper is just such a solid planeswalker i'm surprised this is the only time i'm probably going to be bringing it up in this top five list um i might bring it up later we'll see um this is also on the new virtue of loyalty from uh Woe of Wilds of Eldraine. That's the set code. Wilds of Eldraine. Yes. Uh, so for the instant speed, one and a white, create a 2 2 knight creature token with vigilance. And for the actual enchantment itself, at the beginning of your instep, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Untap those creatures. It is absolutely bonkers. And wedding announcement. And wedding announcement will be in another deck on this list because it's just a great card i mean wedding announcement um at the beginning of your instep if put in an invitation counter on wedding announcement if you attacked with two or more creatures this turn draw a card otherwise create a one one white human creature token then if the wedding announcement has three or more invitation counters transform it and it's just creatures to control get plus one plus one it's just a very good um it's, it's just good honestly it's good it's esper mid ranger casting very important spells and uh in very impactful creatures and that's the first one on this list All right, going into the next deck, this is the deck I'll be playing in standard RCQ season, so I had to include it in this list as my second spot. Um, we're talking about Golgari Midrange. That's right, another midrange deck in the standard meta. What? Who would have thought, and whoever would have thought Liliana of the Veil was a good card? I mean, come on. This getting reprinted into standard was one of the best moves Watsi's ever made for black players like me. Um, so if you don't know what Liliana the Veil does, uh, she is a one and two black for a three loyalty planeswalker you can uptick one each player discards a card down tick two target player sacrifices a creature or neg six uh separate all permanent target player controls into two piles that player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of their choice typically we're not going to care about the neg six we are 
plus one and neg two all the time until she dies. Um, so let's get into the creatures in this deck. This is a mid range list, so we're playing a couple copies of Tenacious Underdog. Uh, we're playing Graveyard Trespasser, obviously. It's just a great card. It has Ward Discard a card. It's oh, so good. And then we're talking about a couple of Woe All Stars in this list. That's right. We're playing Mosswood Dread Knight to draw cards and play it from its adventure from the grave. We're playing Blossoming Turtus. Turtus? Tortoise? <laughs> We're playing Blossoming Tortoise because uh, making our main lands into big buff creatures is amazing and milling three to get back a land is the ramp we love we're also on the she ordered the apocalypse in this deck because we're in black um it's just a great card in this list and we are also on a couple pieces of removal like cut down go for the throat tear asunder she ordered zedek and virtue of present pestilence uh, tell me how to say that word in the comments down below because I can't pronounce it today apparently. Uh, so for the sorcery, it is target creature gets minus three, minus three, and you gain two life for two, two, one, and a black. Uh, and then for the enchantment, it is five by black. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Notice it said from a graveyard, so we don't always have to target ourselves. We can target our opponents if they're, say, on Esper midrange. We want to take one of their discarded for fiends. So coming in at third in our list, we are going to talk about domain or ramp, uh, whatever you want to call it. We are going to ramp to high heaven and cast Atraxa and some domain shenanigans. Uh, Atraxa the Grand Unifier is personally one of my favorite cards that's came out this year and it's almost the deck I built, but I in playtesting fell in love with Golgar midrange over this deck, but this is still a very cool deck and I definitely think it deserves to be on this list. So basically the idea on this list is you want to get a Traxa out as early as possible and look at the top 10 cards of your library and hopefully take five, right? Like we want one of each, but we're also running Topiary Stomper to get those lands out early and get a 4-4 online with Vigilance. I mean, come on. We're also on Archangel of Wrath. Um, it is a two and white, white angel. That's a 3-4 with kicker black and or red uh, flying lifelink. Whenever it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it deals two damage to any target. And when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked twice, it deals two damage to any target. So basically, you just steal a bunch of damage with it when ETBs. It's great. Uh, we're on Get Lost, a new removal piece from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, which I am very high key on this card. I think more decks should play Get Lost. I think it's a great card. Yeah. Um, it's controller makes two maps, sure, but like it's a good removal spell. It hits creatures, enchantments, and planeswalkers for one in a white. It's just too good. It's too good. We're playing Sunfall, the board wipe from uh mom it's from mom i didn't have to look at that set code you did it wasn't me um so uh it exiles our creatures then you incubate x times where x is the amount of creatures that were destroyed it's just a good card we're also on farewell in this deck because farewell and we have another woe all-star in this list up the beanstalk so up the beanstalk if you've been sleeping under the beanstalk uh is a one and green enchantment that says when up the beanstalk enters the battlefield or and, or and uh same difference basically um whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater draw card it's just a good card draw engine we're also on leyline binding in this deck which is a great domain card um it's uh, it's a removal piece it's great it's on the screen somewhere on one of my sides uh read it for yourself it's real good uh this deck is awesome i think it's very cool it's not personally my play style for a 60 card format but i think it's a deck that's definitely worth playing and definitely adding to this list If you want to build a standard deck, why not go to TCG Player? TCG Player is the home of tons and tons of deals and steals when it comes to Magic the Gathering. I mean, come on, they have thousands of singles to choose from. They have deck boxes, sleeves, play mats. You need an accessory for Magic, they probably have it. I mean, you can go look on the website right now. Any, you know, I'm using the click down below. It's in the description. You can use my link. It's great. You, and I think you should go shop at TCG Player. It's just a no brainer, right? And you, when you uh, when you spend 20 or more dollars, you get free shipping. That's pretty hot, right? Free shipping's pretty hot. And you know, if you're impatient like I am, 
and you're using TCG Player Direct, you can pay, I think it's $7.99 for express shipping. You get it in four days. That's a steal in my book. I, I am always happy to pay a couple extra dollars to get my cards here faster. So why not shop at TCGPlayer.com today? So, no, coming in at number four on this list is the deck I think we're going to be seeing the most in RCQ play because it is not only the cheapest to play, but it's one of those decks that is very fast. Um, it's very quick. If it goes unchecked, we are talking about red deck wins or mono red aggro. Uh, it's basically the same thing in this format, I think, in my personal opinion. If I'm wrong, you can tell me down below. But this deck is, it's it's stock red, right? It's stock red. You're playing Monastery Swiss Spears. You're playing playing Shivan Devastators, Bloodthirsty Adversaries, Charming Scoundrel, which I am very high on. Uh, Charming Scoundrel is a 1-1 one, one for 1 in a red with haste, and when it ETBs, you can discard a card, draw a card, create a treasure token, or create a wicked roll attack, attached to a creature you control. It's a very good card. Uh, I think it's not to be slept on. Uh, Felden, Runom Excavator, which is a hasty 2-2 two -two for 1 in a red. Uh, it can't lock, but whenever it's dealt damage, you exile that many cards from the top of your library, and you can choose one from them. Until the end of your next turn, that's right, next turn, you can play that card it's just good card advantage on a stick we're on godric which i'm not going to take the time to read cel its celebration to you you can just read it for yourself on the screen right here i'll give you a second yeah godric's good um and we also have squee dubious monarch which is basically another goblin rabble master but i think it's better because it can come back that's right squee is a two two and a red Two 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 two, 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 with haste. Uh, when Squee Dubious Monarch attacks, create a one one red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking, and you can cast Squee Dubious Monarch from your graveyard by paying three and a red and exiling four other cards from your graveyard rather than paying its mana cost. So yeah, Squee's just good, and Squee's always gonna be good no matter what format he shows up in. Uh, you're you're also on Play with Fire, Lightning Strike, Nahiri's Warcrafting. Witch Stalker Frenzy. It's just this deck is really good. It's mono red. It's basically the same as what you would expect in almost any other format. Just a bunch of hasty, uh, hasty dudes, burn spells, and low to the ground stuff to keep the aggro game up and keep your opponent guessing on if they're gonna draw a removal spell. And next, we're gonna talk about. UB, that's right, Azorius Soldiers. Yeah, Azorius Soldiers is still alive and kicking going into RCQ season. Uh, I'm still not, I still don't know exactly what to expect from Murders of Mark, Murders at Markov. Um, we're gonna see what that adds. I'm thinking there might be a Boros deck that emerges after that set releases. But for now, let's talk about Azorius Soldiers. So this deck heavily revolves around Harbin, Vanguard, Aviator, uh, Flying. Whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain Flying until end of turn. That's right, Flying. Uh, we also are heavy reliant on Recruitment Officer, which is a one mana two one that says, uh, Pay three and a white. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with mana value three or less from among them. Put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, we are on Resolute Reinforcements. That's a, a flashy 1-1 one, one for two mana that makes a 1-1 one, one, one soldier when it ETBs. Uh, we are on Zephyr Sentinel, which is a flash flying 2-1 for one in a blue. Uh, whenever it ETBs, return up to one target creature you control to its owner's hand. If it was a soldier, you put a plus one plus one on Zephyr Sentinel. We are on Trishana's Tidebinder, a new card from the Lost Guidance of Ixalan. This card is amazing. Uh, so if you haven't read it yet, it's a two and a blue for a 3-2 Flasher Merfolk Wizard. Um, when Tishana's Tidebinder enters the battlefield, counter up to one target activated or triggered ability. If it was an artifact, creature, or planeswalker countered this way, uh, that player, that permanent loses all abilities 
as long as Trishana's tie binder remains on the battlefield. So it's basically a uh, no button. This is another deck that is on wedding announcement. It's just it's a good card. It's going to see play in a lot of the white decks. Uh, Make disappear is really the only counter magic I think that is good in standard right now. Um, so the, to, let's be honest, counters are not great for the in the standard better right now we don't have a ton to work with because like yeah we have an offer you can't refuse but that's gonna feed our opponent to more treasures and we don't really want to do that in this 1v1 format with 20 life and there's just a lot of good cards in this list you'll see it All right, those are my top five. And no, I'm not gonna talk about Pregnant Quinn in this video. I don't know how, I don't know how I feel about that deck yet. I don't know if I'm gonna, if we're really gonna see a lot of Discover decks in RCQ season because it's such a new deck. It hasn't really had a lot of time for testing yet. So a lot of the newer decks that are based on Lost Caverns of Ixalan, I did not include in this deck because we just don't have the metadata on them yet to include them in this video but i did want to mention discover combo at the end of this video because i do think it maybe has legs but we'll see we'll see um and you know of course i do think there's maybe a chance that a boros deck emerges with um murders at Mar karloff manor um i the lightning helix coming back is something i'm not excited to deal with in standard i hate Boros and I hate that card so much um but you know I'm just the resident Boros hater what do I know um that being said if you liked this video and if you like standard click the like button down below subscribe and hit the bell so you know next time I upload I'm going to be trying to do some standard gameplay here soon on the channel so look forward to that in 2024 and Dual Commander is coming back, I promise. Uh, we, I am currently working on scheduling some recording sessions for that, so we will have some more 1v1 format on the channel very soon. But that being said... Um